Hello my friends, how are you doing? Today we will have a look at the powerful assistant in Affinity Photo. Shout out to Derek Appleton who pointed that function out to me. My name is Olivio, I'm a professional designer sharing my industry secrets with you. So maybe subscribe to my YouTube channel for free. Also, please join my live stream tomorrow where I will show you the new amazing creative pack. And also we will have a look at the beautiful entries of this week's challenge. FilterForge will give out a FilterForge 10 professional edition key to the winner of this week's challenge. Let's get started with the tutorial. So. In case you're wondering what is the assistant in Affinity Photo, you might have seen this little pop up happening once in a while. There's a little tuxedo icon in there and telling you about some stuff happening in the background. You can actually control what is happening there. And this gives you functions you might not even thought could be possible. To find the assistant manager, you want to look up here in your toolbar. There is again this tuxedo icon. You click on that and this opens up the menu for your assistant. Now, if you don't see that, you can also go to view and then to assistant manager. And this opens up the same menu. And this one is for the normal photo persona inside of Affinity Photo, right? But you also have settings for the developer persona where you develop your raw pictures. To access that, click down here on this little icon which says Develop Assistant and you get some extra settings for that. You can see here we have multiple settings and in most of them we get a pop-up menu with two choices. Sometimes we get even three choices in here. Let's start at the beginning up here in the top left. You can completely disable the assistant if you don't want to have that. And over here, before we start with all the choices, you can see an extra box where it says that you can turn off the little alert message if this might annoy you. Little word of caution before you start to do any kind of changes in here is that there seems to be no reset button for that. So maybe make a little screenshot and save that before you start to experiment with the settings here. Let's look at the more important settings to give you a little idea of what you can do with that. And then you can experiment with the rest of these functions. So here is one that is really interesting. It says brush tool sharing and you get the choice between smart sharing between the tools brushes shared between all tools and no sharing between tools. So what that means for smart sharing is that, for example, if you choose a tip for the paintbrush, this tip is going to be shared between different kinds of paint tools in a smart way, but not to the eraser brush. So you can see here, if I switch this, for example, over to a textured brush like this, you can see it has this kind of tip now. But if I go to my eraser, it still has just a round tip, right? Now, if I switch this over to brush shared between all tools and I select this, you can see that now my brush has this tip and I go over to the eraser and it also has this tip. It's kind of harder to see. And this might be interesting, for example, if you do digital painting or if you do retouch on your photos and you want to have the same eraser as the brush so you can quickly go back and forward between them for that kind of situation that might be really interesting. Another really interesting one is up here that says erasing from vector layer. So let's create a vector shape over here like so. And then I use my eraser tool and this is set up to place a mask layer inside and erase. And what that means is, as you can see here, if I use my eraser on the vector shape, this will erase parts, but in a non-destructive way, because when you look over here on the right side where the layers are, you will see that the rectangle has now a mask applied to it and the eraser is actually just acting on the mask not on my rectangle. Of course, if I wish to, I can switch this over to rasterize layer and erase. So if I would now do that, look at this, this is still a rectangle layer. Now I use my eraser tool and now it has been changed over to a pixel layer and the eraser 
has been used on that pixel layer. So this is a destructive method. Another one that is really powerful, really cool is down here, adding adjustment layer to selection. And usually this creates a new layer. You can see here, I have selected my background and now I add a curve to that. And the curve is added as an extra layer on top of that. Now that's great if you want that, but if you usually want to have it as a child layer, you can do that. You can go in here and say, I want to have this add adjustment as child layer. So let's do this again. You can see I have my background selected. I go to adjustment and curve, and now this is added automatically as a child layer. That is pretty awesome. And you can also do this for mask layers, which are usually added as child layers, but you can switch this over to have it as an extra layer, like so. You can see now it's an extra layer. And for the live filter layers, you can do the same thing. Usually they are added as a child layer, but if you don't want that and you know I'm not a fan of that, you can switch this over over here. And then you can see down here in this kind of setting, and now they are added as an extra layer. So you can really define how you want your workflow to happen, how Affinity Photo should react to your actions. Go through the other points. It's really some interesting, cool stuff in here. Experiment a little bit with that and see you tomorrow in the live stream. Have a nice day. Bye.